Hi, my name is Liam Sullivan, and welcome to my explainer video on the use of the electrophenton reaction for quantum dot synthesis. Before we start setting up the experiment, I'd like to discuss a bit about what the electrophenton reaction is. This electrochemical reaction takes place under acidic conditions in an aqueous solution containing iron while also bubbling in O2 or lab air. When the correct voltage is applied, we ultimately will create a hydroxide radical. This is the major product of this reaction that we'll be using. This hydroxide radical can attack the edge or defect sites of our existing nanosheet or quantum dot solution. Through doing so, it will break the existing nanosheet or quantum dots into smaller and smaller pieces. This allows us to control the size of our quantum dots by changing the amount of time that the solution is exposed to the electrophenton reaction. Before we get started, you'll need a few things, including a three-necked round-bottom flask, three different clamps on two ring stands set up as pictured above, and a magnetic stir plate. Once you have that set up, we can move on to weighing our iron sulfate septahydrate. For a 50 milliliter solution, we will be using 0 0.6950 grams of the iron sulfate. This solid can be taken over to the round bottom flask and poured directly in. Next, we will add 40 milliliters of deionized water measured out in a graduated cylinder followed immediately by 10 milliliters of our supernatant solution, also measured out in a graduated cylinder. Once we've added these two solutions, you can also add a stir bar. Next, we will begin prepping our electrodes. We will start by preparing our platinum wire electrode. For this, we will need a clean hypodermic needle. Be very careful because this is sharp. We will take the hypodermic needle and our platinum wire, which has been cleaned, and we will insert the platinum wire into the tip of the needle. Then we will grab a septum and push the tip of the needle with the wire through the septum, feeding our wire through the rubber septum. This is in place. We can pull the platinum wire out of the tip of the needle and remove the tip of the needle for now. We will need it later, so please keep it nearby. In this case, the platinum wire is not far enough in the septa to actually reach the bottom of the solution. To remedy this, we should take out the septa and pull the platinum wire a little bit further down. Next, we will begin preparing the reference electrode, in this case, a silver-silver chloride electrode. This one is pretty simple. Just remove it from the buffer solution and put it into the middle neck of the round bottom flask, adjusting it to the height necessary. Though it is not shown here, once you have the correct height, you should tighten the second clamp that is on that ring stand, holding the silver-silver chloride reference electrode in place. This is also a good time to put in the septa for the platinum wire electrode. Finally, after cutting an appropriate length of the graphite electrode, we will add that to the work one clamp. This is clamped directly onto the clamp for the potentiostat. And this is placed in the left neck of the round bottom flask with the third and final clamp being tightened to hold this in place. Next, we should add our potentiostat clamps to the electrodes which are now in place. The work one and work sense goes to the graphite electrode, while the counter electrode goes to our platinum wire. Finally, our reference electrode will go to the silver silver chloride electrode in the middle neck of the flask. The last clamp is the gray chassis electrode clamp, and this can go to any piece of metal that is on the lab bench. 
In this case, it goes to one of the screws tightening the clamps. Next, you should turn on the potentiostat and open up the Aftermath software. You'll open up the CA parameters file and make sure that they are set to 0 MV versus reference and 0 seconds for the induction period. The forward step is all we really care about. In this example, we use a voltage potential of 0 0.55 volts and a duration of 24 hours, but you should use whatever parameters are necessary for your experiment. The potential for the relaxation period is also zero, as is the duration. You'll want to make sure that the Pine Wave Driver is registered and connected to the computer, seen in the bottom left corner. Then you can hit Perform. You'll see this graph appear. There won't be any data for some time, but just be patient. You see a red line appear on the chrono amptometry graph that appears once you click Perform you know that the experiment is running. We don't have to pay too close attention to this data. As long as the graph is continuing, you know that the experiment is still underway and there hasn't been a short circuit. Once you see this, you know you're good to go. Once the experiment has completed, you can turn off the potentiostat and disconnect the electrodes in the reverse order in which you connected them. After this, you are free to take up some of your solution in a pipette and test it out using UV Viz or any other analysis technique you need. Thank you for watching my explainer video on how to perform an electrophenton reaction.